Hi everybody, John here. Just want to throw in this quick video as a response to um, some uh, some video that uh, Steve Whitty just made recently, where he showed uh, records that he had um, in his collection that are without cover. Um, it, I thought it was quite interesting that he showed those, and 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 quite brave. I'm sure you know there are purists out there that would uh, shudder at the thought of uh, showing anything less than a complete cover with record. Uh, but by my reckoning, anyone that collects records and uh, you know has maybe a few hundred at least, and you've been doing it a while, by my reckoning most people would have uh, at least one record that is without a cover. Um, I think that because well, you know, when you're out crate digging or browsing through shelves and things like that, inevitably records do come up um, that may be of interest and uh, maybe it's one you don't have and maybe it simply just doesn't have a cover. So um, I think most people would grab that. Um, I may be wrong, um, but I don't think I am. I'm going to show you some of the records that I've had for a long time without covers. Um, this is the one, the first one that came to my mind when when Steve was, was okay, showing Okay, so it. here's um, a copy of David Bowie Low um, that I had um, for many, many years. I, I can't remember how long I've had this. Uh, I would suggest way back into my teens, I suspect. Uh, somebody's written Lulu up here on this white sleeve. Um, and whoever owned this before me wrote the track listing and the name, David Bowie Lowe. But yeah, for a couple of decades, I suppose, this was my only copy of Lowe. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been the record that has sort of uh, has done the job for me. Recent years, I bought um, a copy, a better copy with uh, with a cover, but uh, you know that copy of Low saw me through some hard times. Uh, staying on the David Bowie theme, uh, this <coughs> is uh, one of my first, uh, one of my earliest records. Not the first, but I would have got this yeah, when I was what 14, 15, I suppose. And because I've had it for so long, uh, the original record. Um, yeah, I had this as a teenager. It's I don't know if you can see it really, it's really badly scuffed and scratched. Um, and so I don't play that because it, it just jumps. Uh, however, I was fortunate enough one day to stumble across um, a copy of this album um, without the cover. And it's much better shape, much better condition, it plays all the way through without skipping. Um, I know it's not everybody's favourite David Bowie record. Not particularly mine either, but now and again, if I want to listen to it, it's nice to be able to do that without uh, without like, the skips and the scratches that uh, my original copy has acquired since my teen years. Um, so that was a good example of, of one. Um, I've recently shown this record. Um, this Jimi Hendrix, The Cry of Love. Um, this is a copy that I've had. It's on track record. You see that? Um, I've had this again it, since my teen years. Found it in a jumble sale, if I remember rightly, going back all that time. It's so it's the first posthumous release uh, by Jimi Hendrix called "The Cry of Love," and because it had no cover, I made my own. Um, yeah, I took a uh, Johnny Cash. Golden Hits Volume 1 uh, cover, turned it inside out, did my own little bit of artwork, started to do a bit of a track listing on the back, and that's served me well for a while. I haven't really been interested in playing it that much because the record is a bit warped, but you know, um, as a kid, it did me fine. Um, just recently, when I met up with uh, James Griffiths up in his town, his hometown. Um, I came across 
a relatively good copy of this album uh, just for a fiver. So uh, yeah, so that that sleeveless copy did me well for a long time. Next couple I'm going to show are records that I bought. Here's a good one. Yeah, um, I remember in Portsmouth, Portsmouth, England, when I was a student, uh, as Price was closing its record sales. So all the records that they had was just, you know, being flogged off because they were going straight over to CDs uh, completely. So a lot of the records were just, you know, tossed in shelves and um, sold off dirt cheap. This is one of them. Still got the price on it, 99p. So this is like a generic cover. It's uh, an album by Testament, thrash metal band. Um, there you go, and yeah, it has no cover, lovely condition though, mint condition I'd say, even if it's a little bit dusty, um, there you go, that's the testament, the legacy, I uh, don't even know what the cover looks like to be honest with you, um, I'll look this up and insert it here, and another one that I bought from that very same sale, is um, a record by Rat. Again, got it for next to nothing. Um, and uh, yeah, record lovely condition. Um, I haven't come across the covers of these, so uh, you know, so that I can house my, 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 my sleeveless copies in them, but uh, when I do, they're ready to go. Okay everybody, um, thanks very much for watching. Um, I dare anybody else out there uh, to show their sleeveless copies of records that they have in their collection. Thanks very much, check out my next video, bye.